single most important thing we want to achieve is for President Obama to be a one-term president. I'm Essie Cup. Welcome to Unfiltered. Remember that line in 2010? It earned Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell scorn from Democrats who still regularly invoke it to point to Republican obstruction in Congress. But as much as Democrats like to wax nostalgic about the Obama era, McConnell's remarks weren't actually as bad as they paint them to be. For one, he didn't make them at the very start of Obama's term, as some Democrats are fond of implying. He said them nearly two years later in an interview with the National Journal on the eve of the midterm elections. And his point, if you read the entire interview, was that if Republicans wanted to implement their own policies, the only way to do that was to win the next election, which seems an obvious notion. The Democrats who tout McConnell's line also leave out the part of the interview where he said, I don't want the president to fail. I want him to change. So in hindsight, and in that context, the words seem far less sinister. It's the goal of both parties, every election cycle, to make their opponent a one-term president. It's especially less sinister compared with what Republicans today are doing. It's not merely obstruction, but destruction, burning it down, a total dismantling of functional government. In short, their goal today is chaos. Don't believe me? One Republican just said the quiet part out loud. Rep. Chip Roy of Texas was caught on video at a Patriot Voices event in June saying the following of the infrastructure deal that is yet to make its way through Congress. I actually say, thank the Lord, 18 more months of chaos and the inability to get stuff done. That's what we want. In case you thought maybe he didn't mean it like that, he was asked this week about it and doubled down, saying he plans to oppose almost everything that Congress does. Not just the left, but the, quote, weak Republicans, too. Now, listen, conservatives have long touted the role of the Republican Party in slowing Democrats down. They talk about a sweeping Democratic agenda, the kind that saw huge, complex pieces of legislation, like Obamacare, passed quickly and without a single Republican vote, and then the details are worked out later. I think that is part of checks and balances, being a, a governor on the Democrats' race car. And Democrats, as well, would admit their goal at times is to stop Republican legislation and Republican presidents. That's how it works. I'm not mad at it. But what this Republican Congress, including McConnell, is trying to do isn't good governance. It's annihilation. Chaos, not lawmaking or problem solving, is the only objective. Rather than meet Democrats with competing ideas for fixing all kinds of broken systems, many Republicans are merely aiming for confusion, distraction, and destruction. And the collapse of conservative ideas started, of course, with the election of President Donald Trump, who used chaos and disruption to distract from his only real goals as president, self-promotion, power, and greed. The constant gaslighting, the late-night Twitter rants, hurling insults at allies and praising enemies, all just designed to keep us busy while he corrupted, consolidated, and abused his power. In fact, a year ago, amidst the spiraling pandemic, death numbers, and protests raging over the death of George Floyd, I did an unfiltered titled, For Trump, Continued Chaos is the Plan. Because a normal president under those dire circumstances and in an election year would have looked for opportunities to be a leader, solve problems, bring the nation together. Instead, he spread dangerous conspiracy theories about the pandemic and fake COVID cures, and his administration sicked the military on peaceful protesters. Republicans then were all too willing to let chaos co-opt the party. Many fed the conspiracy theories, and far too many would end up pushing the big lie. That destructive choice led to the ultimate chaos on January 6th, when Trump and Republicans helped drive a mob of supporters to storm the Capitol. Now, apparently feeling no remorse for encouraging that chaos, Republicans in Congress are sticking with that plan heading into the midterms. 
They're attempting to thwart the investigation of the January 6th insurrection. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy admitted as much. They're pushing for more pointless audits of the 2020 election. They're still chasing Trump around as he manically tries to cling to relevance, most recently launching a frivolous lawsuit against social media companies that banned him. They're boosting dubious claims that the NSA is spying on a Fox News host and allowing a QAnon congresswoman to spew vile nonsense about Nazis and vaccines. If you had actual policy ideas, prescriptions to solve America's problems, you might eschew all this garbage so you could, you know, do your job, which in case anyone's forgotten, is to legislate and govern. Instead, Republicans gave up all their ideas in favor of the chaos. I'd say that voters deserve better because we certainly do, but many Republican voters seem to want this. They want more Trump, more Marjorie Taylor Greene, more conspiracy theories, more big lie, more destruction and disruption. They've somehow been convinced that this is actually serving them well, that this is empowering them. It isn't. Chaos and conspiracy theories around COVID are making them less safe. Nearly all deaths from COVID in the U.S. now are among the unvaccinated. Continuing to push the big lie over election fraud is just wasting taxpayer dollars, their own money, on nonsense that isn't going anywhere. The fomenting of racism, extremism, and bigotry, the obsession over culture war garbage is endangering people. None of this is making anyone's life better. None of this is leadership or public service. And that's on you, Republicans for a job not well done. A job not done at all. Okay, that does it for me. See you next week.